When users leave a website as a form of protest, they'll usually find a new website to call home. I like to call these Exodus sites, a group of people brought together by just how much they hated that last place they were in. These are nothing new, but I do have to admit that in my brief time spent on Parler, there was something different about this community. I think the defining factor of these Exodus sites is that while most social media platforms usually have a variety of topics to discuss, Exodus sites tend to be single-minded. Most of the conversation stems from the subject that originally led to everyone joining the Exodus site. It's all they talk about. Which also means that these communities only remain popular for as long as the topic does. When people get tired of discussing the same old thing over and over again, the website starts to lose some traffic. One of the things that made Parler's user base unique, though, was that it wasn't just pulling angry people from one website. The people of Parler were actually leaving both Facebook and Twitter, which made for a pretty interesting cocktail of rage. Most of my time on Parler was spent in comment sections of popular conservatives, as that was where usually the most interesting conversations were happening. And what made these conversations interesting, you ask? Well, when people come to your website to avoid censorship, you have to handle moderation very delicately. Which meant that the extra crazy people who are usually the most censored were even louder than usual, and as a result, you'd quickly see arguments breaking out below popular posts. Most internet communities are prone to becoming echo chambers, but because Parler was sort of formed to be an echo chamber, it actually made the differences in ideology that much more stark amongst its users. You probably couldn't notice it from the surface level, but there was probably more conservative infighting happening on Parler than on any other platform. While the users of Parler universally agreed that they needed to fight censorship of big corporations, there was rarely any actual consensus on how best to handle the problem. And this was never more apparent than after what happened on January 7th to the US Capitol building. Even before the community was taken down, people were already posting their distaste for the tactics being used at this protest, while others argued that we needed to go even further. One of the last posts I saw on the website was from a woman who I had been following since originally downloading the app. I had seen her posting these countless calls to actions, calls for recounts, calls for protests, calls for justice. The last thing I saw before Amazon took down Parler servers was a photo she had posted of a sunset and one word, breathe. Ultimately, Exodus sites often end up as failures. They're spaces that cater to outcasts of larger communities and in doing so, they often end up showcasing why those people become outcasts to begin with. But in Parler's case, something else also happened. Those people were proven right. I don't think Amazon taking this community down is going to solve any problems. Even if you thought the site was full of dangerous people, taking the community down doesn't make those people go away. It just makes them find some other place to call home that you can't see. Believe me, you're much better off keeping an eye on the things that scare you. And that's just so easy to do when you're living on the internet. Have a good evening, Netscape Navigators.